Over 5,000 wines from more than 25 states competed in the largest competition of American wines in the world. We're here to give you a taste of the exclusive few who came out on top. I am thrilled to be joined by the gentlemen of Involve Winery. I've got Ben and Mike here with me. And hey, gentlemen, congratulations on the best of class for the rosé. It's a really, really nice rosé for a warm day. And it's great with food, too. It's very versatile. You can have it with a lot of different foods. But really excited uh, on the best of class and really excited to be here. Tell us a little bit about the stuff that you guys have going on over at the winery in Sonoma. Um, so we, we just moved production facilities. We've been we've been actually up at Benziger making wines for the last five years. We just moved down to 8th Street, so now we're working with um, Phil at Enkidu and, and Morgan Twain Peterson at Bedrock. So we're really excited about this, this next new chapter. Um, we have a tasting room on the Sonoma Square now that we opened up last July. Um, we've got more employees and more wines and uh, Mike and I are on the road all the time selling, 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 but um, you know, just like we said last year, I get, to, I get to work with my best friend every single day and in an industry that's awesome and super competitive, but um, it's, we've been received really well uh, you know, outside of all that silly television stuff. We really we take this, this very serious and, and we work really hard on our wines and our products. As you guys are all over the place, thrilled to see you the other night at a really fun event, a Rock and Vine book release party. Ben, tell us a little bit about that book. It's so cool. Uh, I was actually doing a one of our tastings at the California Wine Merchant here in the city and um, Chelsea Prince, who is of Prince Publishing, um, approached me about this idea, this concept about the next, a book about the next generation of winemakers and, you know, Mikey being third generation Benziger and having like the, the fame story there and, and uh, us kind of getting together and starting this new thing. We're one of, uh, there's 11 people that are highlighted in the book. Um, it's cool. I mean, it's. I think originally she wanted to do a book on us, and we we looked at each other and we're like, man, we haven't we haven't done enough to warrant our own book yet. So uh, may, maybe in 40 years. But um, it's it's a really cool book and a look at you know the up and coming Sonoma and Napa winemakers uh, of this next generation. It's really a next generation of change makers, and the book goes to charity. How important it is for you guys to be able to give back, Mike? We try to give back as much as we can. You know, uh, especially to Sonoma related charities. I mean. That town has shaped us into the men that we are today, and we owe everything to Sonoma and the community, and they've been so supportive of us. So we really try to support local charities, but giving back is something that uh, we're really into, and we try to, to do as much as we can. Well, cheers, gentlemen. I'll raise my glass to giving back, and congrats, uh, congrats on the best of class. Congrats on the big sweepstakes win, Rick. Thank you. Really big year for Corbell, uh, the inauguration back in January. Talk yes, a little bit yes. about that. Oh, yeah. We're, we've been selected since uh, the Reagan era, and ever since then we've had the uh, inaugural champagne, which is quite a unique honor. You have been around forever, since the 1800s, very rich history. What does it mean for you now, all these years later, to still be winning a sweepstakes awards like this? Well, we've been in existence for 130 years and producing quality champagne, California champagnes for all that time. Give us a little clarification about how come you guys are allowed to say California champagne when we know other folks aren't? Sure. We've been in business for 130 years. We just celebrated our anniversary. And so because our name is California Champagne and we to change it at this point in time due to the laws and treaties uh, would be a disservice to our company. And you don't have to, right? Despite what the and French said. We don't said. have to. You know, <laughs> under the treaties we were grandfathered in and and we're gonna keep it. Hey, that's your story and you're sticking to it. Sounds pretty good to me. Hey cheers, congrats you. on the big win, Rick. Very good. I am thrilled to be joined by Mike Scott, owner of Sorelli Winery. We won uh, the Sweepstakes Award for our uh, Rosato Sangiovese, uh, which uh, was uh, a great feat for us. And we want to represent the, the Lodi Appalachian the best way we can. We're trying to make uh, wines the best we can for that Appalachian. Uh, for uh, for the good of uh, our neighborhood, so yeah. it's all good. I am thrilled to be joined by Brian, the winemaker of Terlato Family Vineyards, the big winner of the Red Sweepstakes here at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition. So what was the reaction when you guys heard the news that you won? Oh, it was ecstatic. Everyone was, uh, everyone was so happy. Our tasting room manager called me up on Friday afternoon. I'm at home and he calls and says, we won sweepstakes for the Terlato, or for this uh, Chronicle Wine Competition for Terlato Family Vineyards Pinot Noir, and I'm like, wow. Pinot Noirs tend, at least from what I remember, it tend not to win the sweepstakes. Uh, so this is our 2010 Russian River Valley Pinot Noir for Terlato Family Vineyards, and uh, 
it's 100% delicious. Well, I am thrilled to be joined by the dessert sweepstakes winner, Castello di Amorosa. You own this category. Tell us about the big win. Well, it's uh, this is a late harvest Gewürztraminer that won the sweepstakes again this year. It's the second year in a row. It's a 2011 late harvest Gewürztraminer from Mendocino County and we're very happy about it. We're very excited about it. It's a tribute to our winemaking team. Tell us about your winery. You got the big castle, you got all kinds of action yeah, happening uh, the, up there. The castle it was built by Dario Satui, uh, as the owner of Bisatui. He started Satui and Winery in 1975. Started the castle in 1993, excuse me, uh, with a small vision of, an, of a small Tuscan village style winery. And um, if he walked in today and stood next to us, he said, I got it carried away on this project, and he did. It's 121,000 square feet. Holy smokes, well you got a castle and you have a dessert wine fit for a king or a queen. Cheers.